So for our first day, we're going to do some coding in HTML and CSS. Quick show of hands, how many of you have any experience in coding HTML? Okay, a few people, good. How many of you have any experience coding in CSS? Okay, any experience in coding in JavaScript? Okay, anyone have any experience in coding in any other programming language? Okay, good. Uh, what, what other language, maybe? Um, <clears throat> Java, C Sharp. Okay, good, good. What about you? No, we have PHP, C Sharp, PHP. Okay, good. So, there's a variety of coding languages out there that do a variety of things. The ones that we care about are HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, because ultimately, the, um, those languages are the ones that let us make websites. Now, the Canvas website uh, looks like this with nice buttons and columns and links and all that great stuff but behind the scenes it's code uh, pretty much mostly HTML CSS JavaScript there could be other kinds of code as well but websites are, are made out of a, a coding language uh, traditionally that's where everything started back in 1989 uh, the HTML programming language basically came about and literally changed the world this is a programming language this is a technology that has changed the world you can take a class online instead of in person. You can go to a bank online instead of in person. You can meet friends and family all over the country, all over the world, through websites, which, is, which come from a programming language invented in 1989. Uh, you, you, if you really think about it, like you know the invention of the wheel or that sort of thing, that changed the world. But websites also have really changed society as a way to communicate, uh, to do commerce, um, social activities and so forth and the great thing about it is that it is free uh, to learn the language of websites and to apply the technology something like the original patent for the light bulb for example that was something invented and locked down and patented and you could only make a light bulb of a certain way or you had to pay well the language of websites is free. They put it out there for free for anyone to use. They didn't lock it down, they didn't trademark it and, and that sort of thing. Um, it, it's out there. So what we're going to do is learn a little bit of HTML because that also helps us in modern web design in that nowadays if we use something like WordPress it's kind of drag and drop. You put this picture here and you click this button to make columns but sometimes you need to go in the back end, you need to go behind the scenes and edit code, add something to it, tweak things that might not be that straightforward in the front end and just doing it in the back end in the code is a lot faster, more efficient and so forth. So that's what we're going to touch on uh, a couple of assignments in the beginning first in coding. In order to do any coding we need any sort of software that lets us code and in these computers we have a bunch of them installed. Uh, I'm going to recommend one of them, but some of the ones that we've got installed are Dreamweaver, we've got Brackets, we've got uh, Notepad++, and there's a bunch of other ones as well. We're going to use this one called Brackets, which is available for Windows and Mac. So if you work at home, um, you can download this software for free, Brackets, and you can start writing some code. So how many of you brought a USB flash drive today? You want to plug that in so that we can save your work so you can take it with you. Um, I would not um, assume that whatever you save on these computers will be back here the next time you come back. So if you brought a USB, plug it in so we can save our work. If you didn't bring one, you can email this file to yourself uh, as an attachment. If you need help with that, I can cover that a little later. But you want to plug in a flash drive and then we'll start the software brackets. So go to your start menu and start brackets. I uh, get a pop-up about updates, just cancel that. And brackets has sort of like a preview HTML file. Okay, that's nice, but let's go to the file menu, close all. Oftentimes, I'm also going to zoom in on the screen, maybe for it to be a little bit more visible. I started recording everything here, so if you need to ever replay this stuff, it's, it's on that link. And I'll remind you of the link again a little bit later. So we'll do a file close all. So we have an empty document. I mean an empty screen. 
what we'll do is go up to the file menu open folder a website has a bunch of assets HTML code CSS code JavaScript code graphics maybe sound video a bunch of assets and they should all be contained in a folder so we're gonna open a folder to work uh, to, to write our code in into this folder so open folder if you've got a flash drive you go to your flash drive and select to create a, a folder I, I didn't bring my flash drive I'm gonna put it on the desktop so go to the desktop for example and I'm creating a brand new folder and I'll call it with today's date 2019 06 right? yeah so you can call the folder whatever you want but I usually call these with the date so that I can keep track of the changes that I've made so you create a folder on the desktop and then in brackets we'll go to open the folder and I'm selecting that folder I just made and click select now of course at any point if you're having any trouble raise your hand I'll come help you out no problem uh, you can help each other out of course but if you do I ask that you do it at a reasonable volume so that you don't distract a classmate or me while you're uh, while you're helping all right did everyone get a brand new folder and you open the folder there question I call it today's date so brackets on the left side shows me that I've opened a folder whatever you want to call it and there are no files in the folder just yet so now we'll go up to file menu new now we'll create a new file We'll write one thing, then we'll save this. So HTML uh, code document starts off with this line of code here that explains the type of document that we're about to work with is an HTML document. So it has to be written in a certain way. And if you've never used HTML, it's basically made out of tags. There's a tag that says, um, from here to here is an image. From here to here is a link. From here to here is a video. We're marking the document to have various meanings. And so I've got a tag right here that says that this document type is HTML. We're using the latest HTML, the latest version of HTML. This document is going to use that code. I haven't saved this yet, it's still untitled, so before we go further, let's go to File Save As. File Save As. Save it into the folder we just made, and we will call it index.html. The standard naming convention of the very first screen of a website is often index.html. The first screen you see on a website is index. HTML. It can change, but this is the standard. So now over here, bracket says you're currently working with index.html in the folder 611, and in it you've got this document. Next line, we're going to write the HTML tag, which further defines this is the main document. So we're going to have left angle bracket HTML. As you're typing, it might pop up to help you, but just ignore that for the moment. Angle bracket. So less than, HTML greater than. When you finish typing that, then it types its pair. 99% of HTML has a pair. So you say from here to here is an image. From here to here is something else. So we have a pair 99% of the time. One of the 1% is that first one we wrote. That one doesn't have a pair. I'm going to move this to a separate line by pressing Enter a couple of times. We want to type all of this lowercase. I will point out um, uncommon things and so forth, but it's all lowercase. Uh, it's oftentimes pairs. 
in between the HTML, I'm going to press tab and write head. Break that apart into a couple of lines. And then next line, body. And break that apart. Tabs and the spaces and such are ignored. The, the web browser, Firefox, Chrome, Safari, etc. When it runs your code, when it when it when it uh, uses your code uh, to make to to make a website, it ignores the empty spaces and so forth. So all of this could have worked the same way if it was like that all to the left. But for readability, it's often a good idea to indent stuff so it's a little bit more readable. Inside a body, let's write hello world. The classic first thing that people do when they learn a language, you know, for decades, this, this has been taught for decades all over the world. When you first learn a language, one of the things we first have it do is to say the message, hello world, just to confirm that the most basic aspect of something is working. Now, this, these nine lines of code are like the most minimal amount to make a website. A website like Facebook is millions of lines of code. Our college's website is thousands of lines of code. But something as basic as these nine lines or so is enough for a website. Now, even though I've been doing this since like 2001, I still can't think just in code. I have to see it. So our workflow will be we're going to write some code, we're going to save the code, and then we're going to run the code, we're going to view the code. So if you haven't saved yet, you will see a little dot on the left side over here. You haven't saved it yet. Or you'll see a dot at the top. You haven't saved it yet. So we want to file save or get used to control S. Once you save it, the dot goes away. I wish they would color it like red or something to let you know, hey, look at this. It's just going to be a little, a little dot here, which if you never notice it, it means you haven't saved. So once you save, it goes away. Write your code, save your code, run your code. I think this might vary depending on your computer, but what happens if you click this little lightning bolt on the top right corner? Try clicking that lightning bolt over there called Live Preview. Click that in, and what happens? What should happen is a web browser loads up and then shows you your result, which is the message, hello world. Raise your hand if that worked. OK, great. Now take your hand and pat yourself on the back. You're a web programmer. If it didn't work, anyone have any trouble? Did it not do what we expect? It's supposed to show the message, hello world. Anyone need a little help?
So this code, it has to be very exact. Uh, if you miss one character, it might not work. When you get even more complex with JavaScript, um, it's very, very particular, very finicky. If it doesn't, do, if you don't write it exactly right, it might not work. Okay, well, I said the message "Hello World" on the screen. Body is the part of the web browser that shows the main design. So that's what I'm seeing over here. Hello World. Um, we have this area called head. I'm going to tab and then type the title tag. Break that apart. And then I'll, I'll write here um, June 11, 2011, 2009, I mean 2019, whatever year it is. So I'm going to write a little code. Then you can save it, and then you can run it. Running is clicking the little lightning bolt again or refreshing it in the browser. So add this line here, and let's see our result in the web browser. Where do you see the message June 11th in the web browser? Up in the tab, up at the very top of the browser. So we have an area in our document, the head block where we add content outside of the main window of the browser. And we have an area, the body, the body block, where we add content in the main part of the, um, the web browser. So there are, there's a book. Uh, which I, I believe I have it on Canvas. HTML and CSS by John Duckett. This is one of my favorite books about learning CSS and HTML. It's not required, but if you want a book to learn HTML, I really recommend this. You can get the digital one, the real one. You, know, you can find it online. I really recommend it. I also mentioned on Canvas that, okay, if I don't want to get a book, we have, for example, a website like w3schools.com. This is almost as good as the book, because it is set up as learn HTML, CSS, JavaScript, etc. And it's got chapter by chapter. Wow, that's cool. So a lot of what this book is, is in that website for free. And as you go through it all, eventually, there is a spot about taking a quiz. And you take the quiz and you pass it, you get a certificate that shows that you have this experience in HTML. So I'm not going to cover all of the code. I'm not going to uh, cover this or this or that, whatever. I'm not going to cover all the codes. Like There's like 200 HTML codes, just to pick a number, whatever it is. There's 200 codes. You don't need to know all 200, even if you're an experienced web designer. Uh, you don't need to know them all. You need, to know, you need to know how to look them up if you needed to do something. You need to have a good reference book. But you don't need to have them all memorized. You know, it's a nice party trick to be able to regurgitate them at a party, sure. But in the real world, you don't need to know it all. Same thing with CSS, with JavaScript, PHP, C Sharp, etc. You don't need to know it all. You just need to know what you need to know to do what you need to do. So this, if you've never seen the language, is just enough to give you the idea that I'm going to write tags. I need to maybe learn what some of the tags are to do some of the things. Now I know that the title tag puts a message at the top of the browser. I know that body puts a message in the middle body of the, of the web browser. Well, I need to know how do I make the word hello world big and important looking. We have a tag for that. Let's back up to where we've got hello world and let's type, start writing the tag h1. That's a number one. And remember, HTML is about marking from here to here, do that. Technically, I'm saying from here to there, do this. From here to there, do each one, whatever that means. And there's nothing. So either move this ending tag after hello world so that we say start h1 and then end h1, or move the text into the h1 pair, however you want to do it. Get hello world between 
the tags. So I'm going to cut and paste like that. So now I've marked it H1, which I haven't explained what it does, but I've marked it saying um, start heading one code here, end heading code one here, and to see the result, save it and run it. Save it and go to your live preview. And the result should be text that is now big and bold and important looking like a heading. That's the idea of that tag. If you look at this page in my book, even if you can't read it from a distance, you see that something is big and important looking and then something a little bit less big, and then regular text. This, this whole spread right here can be created as a website because we can have a tag to put images. We can have code to make two columns. We can then put um, text on the top right corner at a certain size. We can make different paragraphs. It's all about learning the right tag. And then it does what we need it to do. Well, with a little bit of knowledge, we are able to create something pretty complex. And our goal for the day is we are going to create this kind of website that's on the, in the book right here, page 323. Um, and uh, then we're gonna, you're going to create your own version of it for the homework. So in the amount of the lecture that we have, we can learn enough of the tags to do this. And then you'll have the time to work at your own pace to make your version of it. And then you'll have the video to replay if you need to replay it. And if you get the book, it's a certain page here to help. Or if you go to the W3 schools, that also helps. But I'm going to mention a few things here. Let's say, line 10, I'm going to write a comment. I'm going to write a message to myself here. This is not code that the web browser will care about. It's a, it's a hidden message. It's a comment for myself. This has a very special tag, less than exclamation point dash dash, and then whatever message, and then space dash dash greater than. So it still has a pair, but very different. It starts like this and it ends like this, and it's a little grayed out because it's not code that the browser will deal with. It'll ignore it. But this is great to write yourself messages. You can write yourself comments such as a free website to learn HTML is, and then you type, you know, whatever message, w3schools.com. So I will oftentimes be writing messages in my code, especially when I teach this. So instead of having a separate file with notes, I put the notes in the code file here, and you can easily refer to it. Even when I'm not teaching this, when I'm doing this in the real world for myself or for clients, uh, as I said, I teach this, but I also am part of a company that we do this for clients, so I bring you real world experience. Even for uh, works for clients, um, me or my team, we often write comments in there because if we're working with more than one person, this is a way to communicate with each other via code. This is a way to communicate and say, don't forget to fix this part um, or leave messages or whatever. Or on myself, when I'm working on my own projects, I might work on something like nonstop for a week and then I put it down for a month and because I'm bored of it, then I come back to it. What did I do? Well, I left myself notes and I can pick up right where I left off. What's great about this tag is, again, you can break it into multiple lines. And just as long as you've got that pair, and this is optional, but as long as you've got that pair, all of that is a comment. So you can write various paragraphs of comment. So the recommended book is HTML and CSS by John Duckett. I spell his name, John Duckett. This example comes from page 323. 
Make sure that all of this comment, if you write the comment, make sure it's all in between the two comment tags. If you have it on one line and then you pressed enter, this is no longer in a comment. Make sure it starts and it ends. So, as I said, you don't need to know all 200 lines of code, uh, of the codes, but we're going to learn a few of them to create a simple, interesting looking little website to get a little practice with coding, uh, with, with, with HTML code. So, in general, we will say purposes of the languages, HTML. CSS JavaScript. HTML. The layout and uh, content. Uh, actually, we'll just say the, we'll keep it simple. The content of the site, CSS. The design of the site, and then JavaScript, the interactivity. So each has a purpose. HTML is where you're putting together the content. Uh, I'm going to have a picture. I'm going to have a paragraph. I'm going to have the basic message, the content of my website. Then with CSS code, we, um, we add the colors, or the alignment, or making columns, the design. And then the interactivity. You tell me, what do you think I mean with interactivity on a website? What can you do on a website? It's a possible way you interact with a website. Links are, are technically part of the basic HTML. They're not as interactive. What about signing in, signing up for an account? What about clicking to search, um, that sort of thing, interacting? What about putting your name on the website so that it pops up your name? You know, that's the interactive part of things. So each language has a purpose. This first assignment will focus on the HTML and the CSS portions, a little bit of content and a little bit of design. Next week's assignment will be on the JavaScript. So. Based on the starting point of the book, we're going to start to create this, this website. And this hello world message, I'm actually going to delete it. I'm going to remove it. I don't want it to say hello world anymore. So we have two options. We can delete it, or what else do you think we could do instead of deleting? Comment it out. So that hello world, I no longer want it visible on the main website. I want to comment it out. So write a comment tag around that hello world to deactivate it. Another way is to delete it, but one reason we might want to deactivate code is we might, gonna, we might want to come back to it. We might want to use it again and I don't want to retype it. Okay, so if your line numbers don't line up with me, that's fine, but I'm on line 19. This is before the end of the body, before the end of the main website. Gonna, here's a new tag, div. div, div, comment. Div tag to make a division in our page, a generic container. One of the concepts that you'll learn as you get deeper into web design, especially the code of it, is that everything is inside of an invisible box. So if I look at this page right here, there's a paragraph. If this were in HTML, it's, in, it's inside of a box, which is invisible. 
This is another element over here. It's inside of an invisible box. Images that might be on the page also are in their own box. So a div is a generic container. So I can put content inside of it. I'm going to move the comment to the next line so I can write a little bit more by adding an ID attribute we can later style it with CSS a generic container it's invisible it doesn't have any any design it doesn't look like anything it's just a container but what I want is to put a background color or maybe center the text or put the picture on the left and the text on the right. I want to change the design. Well, that's when the language, that's when the language CSS comes in. CSS is used to say, okay, let's make this div with this background color or let's make this text big or whatever. But in order for the CSS code to know, to target, an element of your design it needs to be identified somehow so an ID attribute will allow that div to be identifiable and that means that on the div tag I'm going to go back in between the word the word div and the end of the bracket space and then add ID equals quotes I'm about to identify this. So when I write CSS code, it knows, it knows that we mean this. Anything that's inside of this with this certain identifier behaves a certain way or looks a certain way. And this is basically coming as an example from the book. So this is another way to refer back to it. And uh, I'll probably also make a scan of the code that I have here to put it on Canvas just to also help a little bit if you don't have the book. But now this div has an ID of page so that later with the CSS we can further control it. In between div, I'll make another div, another div pair, this time with an ID of logo. So this top div is like the big container that's going to define the whole design of the site. And there's an example in the book about we're going to put a cool little border around our website. We can put drop shadow, whatever. That's our main design of our page, this outer container. Then at the top, we're going to have the top of the design, we're going to have a logo. So we've got a div, we've got a box waiting for us to eventually put the logo in there. The tag that actually then would display the logo is the tag or the code IMG. This is going to display an image. But that's not enough info to, to say, OK, which image? what's its size, etc. It needs an attribute. So attributes go inside of these tags. We didn't need attributes on these other tags. They just did what we needed them. These are going to do a little more. So it has an ID attribute of page. It will behave like something. The image needs an attribute to show what's, what's the source of our image. SRC quotes. And if I had an image called myimage.jpg, if I had an image in the folder where this index file is at called myimage, it would display the image on screen. We're saying here there's an image, and the source of the image, the name of the image, is that. Obviously, if I save it and run it right now, it'll be a broken link because there's obviously no, no picture to actually show. In the folder, the only thing I've got in the folder is that file. 
if in that folder I had an image called whatever, and I said here, let's put the name of the image, it would display the image. So we can do a comment here. Image tag needs a source attribute to display an image, a picture. So these attributes give a little bit more definition to to the tag. The tag has a basic meaning, and we can add a little to it. Now, when you did part one of the class, you worked with images there, right? Um, you went uh, to the uh, media screen of WordPress and you selected an image and you put it into your project, right? Um, you needed to add something to the image so that it was accessible. Was that ever covered? Alt text, exactly. So we can add alt text via the code, whereas in WordPress there's a little box, type your alt text here. Behind the scenes we have the attribute of alt equals whatever, and that's your spot where you add your alt text. So let's say company logo. So that alt text box in WordPress is just the same as having alt attribute with the message. So it's in the same Say that again. So it's in the same as. Um, it's in the same tag. Yes, it, that attribute is in the same tag of image. Yes, uh, a tag might have more than one attribute because we need to give it more data to fully function. So that's some alt text. Next line. UL the note here unordered list aka bullet points used to make a nav bar in uh, in in WordPress, when you want to make a, a nav bar, you go to your appearance menus and you make a nav bar. You drop where you want them and so forth. Behind the scenes, the code that makes a nav bar is basically an unordered list (UL) an unordered list. It's a collection of links. It's like bullet points without the bullets, without the little dots. But in order for us to craft our own menu bar we um, we start off with ul we give this an id of navigation And then each particular item in the menu is an LI, a list item. So we would have like, if this is going to be a menu of the possible links to go to on a website, we have a home button, a home link, list item. We might have, like in the book example, for sale. When you do your own version of the assignment, you're going to change it to be your own sorts of links. Um, but let's say also we had repairs. About and contact. So on a website up at the top, I would have these links: home link, for sale link, repairs, about link, all on all in a row. These li these list items are part of an unordered list, UL, which is basically a menu. So I can write 
can say on our notes over here. Li is a list item. Each item of our nav bar menu. Save it and run it, and you'll see it doesn't quite look like a menu yet. That's fine, because we're still writing the HTML portion of things. We're writing the content. When we want it to look like a menu, when we want it to have a certain design or style, that's when we introduce CSS to style it. But let's give this a shot. Save it and run it. You should see some bullet points. It won't quite look like a menu yet. Let's see what it looks like. Let me check mine. So it should look something like this. It's, very, it's far from complete. But I've got an area at the top where my company logo is going to go. The link is broken, of course, because the image doesn't exist. But then I've got these bullet points that eventually will be a menu that is horizontal. Right now it's just a list of those bullets. So if I wanted to be able to click on For Sale, and it goes to the screen For Sale, I have a tag for that. Uh, the thing about HTML that I like to say is that there's always a tag for a task. My task of putting an image, there's a tag for that, IMG. My task for making something big and bold and, and important looking, there's a tag, H1. There are these, um, there's a tag, multiple ones, for the task of putting together a list of links, but then to actually be able to click on it to go somewhere, there's a tag for that. That's the A tag. Some of these tags are named like what they make sense that they are, but some of them are, um, you know, the, the, what, the name of it is a little weird. So for all of these, I need to add the A tag, and this is the part that if you had known what you were about to do, it'd be a little easier in terms of, I want the A tag wrapped around the words, but we, we, we wrote the words first and then the A tag, so it's going to be a little annoying that it's going to open and close, which we then need to move it to the end over here inside of the list. So be careful about that, but each one of these needs to have the A tag. You need to wrap the A tag around the words. And you need to remove the, the one that it added for you to move it at the end of the word. We'll write a little bit more code, then we'll take a break in a moment. We usually take at least one break throughout the day, but again, it's only a three-hour time once a week. We'll do a little bit more. Um, these A tags are incomplete, just like the image tag was incomplete. The image didn't work until we said what image we're trying to display. The A tag won't work until we also tell it where we're we trying to link to. This has then an attribute of href href it's what is the what is the hypertext reference what is the link you're trying to go to uh, for the moment uh, we have index.html href on sale you can have for sale.html the idea here is that if you click on the link repairs it's going to go to a file called repairs.html, which doesn't exist, so if you try to click on it, it's a broken link. But the idea is to go from one page to another, we need a link. Again, in WordPress, 
you select your text, you click the little button to add a link, and then you type the link. Okay, you're done. Um, but in plain old HTML, the equivalent is that, that you've got some sort of text, and then the A tag that says there's an anchor link here. There's a hypertext reference going somewhere, marking this and ending here. And when you click on repairs, you go to that page. That page does not exist in our folder at the moment, so it'd be a broken link. When you do your own version of the assignment, there is an extra credit opportunity to make these links active. In the example that we're working toward, there is like a design, there's like a border around the whole website. That's that first nav page. Then there's a top graphic area that was the div logo. We're then working on the, the menu bar here. It was the UL ID navigation. Then there's a graphic below that, so we need to add another image. Then we've got a, a little bit of text. So we're going to craft something like this. Even though this is 200, 323 pages into the book, you know we can create something without first reading those 300 pages. Obviously, they're useful. But we're kind of like jumping feet first into some of these basic concepts. So after, uh, oh, actually, I just noticed something here. Um, okay, there's something slightly off. Okay, um, you see, if you click, if you click on on div ID page, it highlights where it starts and where it ends, and and okay, that's good. The, all of this document is in is in this page. Good, but I made a little mistake here. We started div, and then we didn't end div over here until after the nav bar. Uh, it should be that we start to mark up this div I, uh, logo, and then only the image, and then the nav bar. So this ending div, we need to move it up here before the nav bar starts. So I would have realized that after we run it, but I just noticed it here too. So you want to move or cut and paste that div up so that it's right after, or so that it's before the navigation. So I moved it from where it was down here to right here. This div, its purpose is to encompass the image, not the navigation as well. Because after the After the navigation unordered list, we're going to create a paragraph, a plain old paragraph. And inside of it, we have an image, one more image. Source image two. Alt another image. And then lastly, one more paragraph to say, welcome to our site. We hope, blah, blah, blah. I'm just going to write some gibberish. So this is about 50 lines of code. It's a tiny, tiny website. It really doesn't do anything. It's like a, what you might call a, uh, a, sample. a sample website or a brochure website. It doesn't really do too much. Um, there's no interactivity, there's no JavaScript, there's no design, there's no CSS, 
There is content, which is HTML. So there's a paragraph, there will be an image, there's a couple of links, there will be a logo. This is the purpose of HTML, to put our basic content and then style it or design it a little bit with CSS and then make it do things with JavaScript. When I deal with clients in the real world, we oftentimes start with a WordPress site. We build the basics of it in WordPress, but then we need customization. We, they like the starting, the starting theme design, but then we need to customize it. Well, if the WordPress interface, the dashboard, doesn't give you a button to change something, you always have the ability to go behind the scenes and edit the code. Every WordPress site gives you a button where you can click to, it's called Editor, under Appearance Editor. Maybe you've seen it before. Under the Appearance menu, Editor, it lets you edit any of the code of your site. So if the theme authors don't give me a simple button to make a change, and I know some HTML, CSS, and or JavaScript, I can make whatever change I want. That's part of the reason why first day, first two, first two lessons are going to be HTML. Then we'll get back into WordPress to, to use that and then apply the code to the WordPress and then you're even more advanced because WordPress is great and out of the box it works very well and whatever customization they allow you often works great but if you want to take it to the next level you might have to customize it uh, by a code. I'm going to save this and run it and what my project looks like so far something like this eventually there will be an image eventually these buttons will be on a nice row there will be another image here maybe centering things at a paragraph maybe some colors and fonts and things but this is where it's starting so far So if you get something like this, you're on the right track. If not, we're going to take a break at the moment. It's 2.20. We'll take a break until about 2.30. I usually just do short breaks because we don't have a lot of time. But if it works up to this point, something like mine, good. If not, let's uh, figure out what you did. So we'll come back at 2.30 and we'll do a little more.